Right. So I wrote it like that, you know. Two of these verses. One hundred. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, it's interesting what's been happening since because I, I, I think that for a long, long time we have been reading the Bible religiously but not relationally. Mm. And the Bible is my father's book, and in it, I can hear his heartbeat. I can access his character. I can hear his voice. So the Bible, I believe, has been waiting such a time as this when it could be interpreted with what I call a hermeneutic of love. Hermeneutics is the art of interpretation. Many of us, if we've been to theological cemetery, <laughs> seminary, or university department, we have been trained to read the Bible with a hermeneutic of suspicion, detached, clinical, cold, tearing it apart. And a lot, I know a lot of clergy who have been shipwrecked because of that theological training. I really do. A lot of vicars in the Church of England who were trained, influenced by that very suspicious, continental, skeptical theology um, called the higher criticism, but you can't get much lower than that. Um, they basically lost their faith because of that approach. And it's, in my view, it's just my opinion, but it's in my view, it's funded by a spirit of deception. It's from the pit. I'm not saying that the people that propagated liberal theology were bad or are bad, but I think liberal theology is full of lying spirits. So a lot, of, a lot of clergy, a lot of pastors, a lot of leaders, they, they wanted to be confident in the Word and read the Word and really preach the Word, but they lost heart because so many professors who sounded cleverer than they were had told them that the supernatural elements of the Bible weren't true and that the Bible itself is only a human book, a work of fiction. Now, if you hear that long enough, it's going to affect you. Mm. What we need now, and I, I think the Father Heart Movement, which we represent and which we participate in here in Partners in Harvest, I think we have a great opportunity now to reintroduce the Bible into culture in a new way. I'm serious. <clears throat> right? So not as an academic book that can only be accessed by professors with a liberal mindset, but as a book for everyone where orphans can find the perfect father because this is a love story. It's been waiting for such a time as this when the spirit of adoption is moving all across the earth. And there are people with fine minds being raised up who love the word, but who also love the river. And I have great hope that there's coming a day when the Bible will be reclaimed by a father-loving, Jesus-centered, spirit-filled, baptized church. Mm. And the lost are waiting for this moment. This, this little book, one of our Father's House Trust ambassadors, a young person in her late teens, early 20s, somewhere around, she gave a copy of this to a young man in his early 20s who's not a Christian, no experience of church. And he took it on a train with him and then went on to the London Underground, put his hand in his rucksack and pulled out this little book. He started to read one page and found himself in floods of tears. So when he got back above ground, he got on his cell phone and rang the person who had given him the little book and said, what's happening to me? Because he had no framework for this at all. And she said, oh, the Father who loves you is inviting you into a relationship of intimacy through this book. He said, oh, I, I've never heard that before. Never heard that kind of thing before. And he started to fill up again. 
that night he was supposed to meet with a lot of his friends in a London pub. He went into the pub, and they could see he'd been deeply affected by something. And he sat down with them, and they asked him, what's the matter? What, what is it that's affected you? And he said, well, it's this little book. Which incidentally keeps on him the whole time in his back pocket in the daytime under his pillow at night. It's a non-Christian, right? And there's this little book. I was given it by a friend just today and it's really affected me. It's about the Bible. He said, I'm not a church goer, but I'm not a Christian. But this, this is amazing. He started to read a page and the same thing began to happen to his friends around the pub table. The pub landlord saw what was going on and thought, wait a minute, this doesn't look right, went over the table, said, what's going on here? And uh, saw this little book, picked it up, started to read a page, same thing happened to him. So he calls the whole pub to attention. And he says, hey everybody, I'm not a church guy, I'm not a Christian, but I just picked up this little book from the 100 verse Bible. He said, I never knew that the Bible was a book like this. Everybody needs to buy it. Now, when you get non-Christians advertising your books, you know that something is changing in the spiritual atmosphere in our culture, that there is something going on. But I, I, I'm serious when I say this, that I think we've been waiting, and the Holy Spirit's been waiting, for such a time as this, where the Bible could be reintroduced into culture mm. as a love story that can be accessed not just by spiritual sons and daughters, but also by spiritual orphans too. And what I'm seeing in the culture is, and I don't think this is a too, too grand a statement, what I'm seeing in the culture now is that there is a stirring of non-Christian hearts. There is a desire and a desperation for a wisdom that lasts and a truth that's more than just temporal. And people are beginning to weep when they hear the sounds of the Father's book. A year ago, somebody said to me, switch on the television, watch Celebrity Big Brother. And I don't ever watch Big Brother, and in fact, I'm certainly not recommending anybody watches Big Brother. I mean, I'm a culture watcher, but there are some boundaries for me. But something was kicking off in Celebrity Big Brother about a year ago, 14 months ago to be exact. A film star by the name of Stephen Baldwin um, was in the Big Brother house. Stephen Baldwin is a born-again Christian. And he was walking around the Big Brother house with a Bible everywhere, his big black leather Bible. And it was causing a big stir. Vinnie Jones was on the same <laughs> Big Brother, celebrity Big Brother house. And of course, you see, when you've got people like that, there's going to be opposition. There's some opposition. But there's also one or two people that are beginning to get interested because every afternoon, Stephen Baldwin is holding a Bible study. <laughs> This is Big Brother House. <laughs> Stephanie Beecham is a film star, not a Christian. She went into the diary room of Big Brother House and was interviewed by whoever it is, Big Brother, I guess. <laughs> and she was asked, what did she, what did she feel? How did she feel about Stephen Baldwin probably being evicted quite soon from the Big Brother House? She suddenly began to weep. And she didn't know why she was weeping. She's an actress. You know, and your first thought is she's acting. But she wasn't, because she kept saying, I don't know what this is. I'm not acting. And then she went like this. Ugh! This is live on secular TV. And she said, what's that? I've just been hit. I was watching this thing live. I was in the gym. I was on a cross trainer, a monitor right in front of me. And I was watching Stephanie Beecham live on secular TV being hit by the Holy Spirit. She started to weep again. And in fact, I'm going to read you her exact words because I don't, I don't want to meander about this. I want to give you her exact words. She said this. It genuinely moved me, the idea of not having the Bible. I'm not acting, but the idea of not having the Bible would be truly depressing. If Stephen were to go, I would really like the privilege of the Bible, please. And then, as soon as she said that, she gets hit again. Whoa! Like that. And she says, it's the Bible. Wow, it hit me again. Whoa! 
she said, it was the Bible. <laughs> Whoa, I feel like I've been punched in the stomach. <laughs> now, it's fascinating. You watch this whole sequence on YouTube. If you look at the conversations below, as people try and work out what it is that's going on with Stephanie Beecher, because they have no framework for it, except for one person who I'm convinced was probably an African Christian. Because she just writes this one sentence, it's the Holy Spirit, baby. <laughs> Something's going on. You know, when you get somebody on an underground train and a whole group of unchurched 20-somethings in a park weeping over the word, and you get the same thing breaking out in the Big Brother house, you have to say something is going on. People are weeping over.